Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over how to deploy a Django app with Heroku. Um, this is gonna be focused more towards the beginners when it comes to deployment. If you want a more production ready application uh, deployed, uh, you may need to configure some things a little bit more than what we're gonna do here. Uh, Django, uh, Heroku has some good docs on, on what you need to do for that. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna focus on just helping those get their feet wet and just a basic deployment so they can test things out and get their application up so they can kind of play around with different settings and figure out um, how they want it set up. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you need to go ahead and create an account. So I'm at heroku.com already. I'm already signed in. Uh, if you have not already created an account, make sure you create one and log in. Once that's all done, you should be set up uh, right here. First things we'll do is we'll go and create a new app. So I'll do create a new app right here. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it uh, LS Django uh, Deploy. And we'll go ahead and create that app. And then now that once we have an app created, it will take us to this page right here. And there's different ways to deploy with Heroku. We're going to focus on this first tab here that should be selected by default. And we need to install a few things before we can actually use this. First thing we'll install is Git. So if you've not, if you've not used Git or you don't have it installed, you can go ahead and just search Git. And then you should find this Git link here, and this will give you uh, just git-scm.com. Uh, if you go to downloads, you should be able to see downloads for different operating systems. Pick the one that works for you and get that installed. And then once that's installed, the next step will be to install this Git, uh, this Heroku CLI. So we open this link in a new tab. It'll give us instructions on how to install it, um, you know, for Mac, Windows, or Linux, or whatever else. There's some more options down here. Make sure you have that installed as well. Okay, now that we have both those two things installed, we can go ahead and get started with this project, with, with deploying this project. So, first we'll follow these instructions right here. So first, we need to log into the, the to Heroku using the CLI. So I'm already have a I already have a terminal window here open to the root of my project. So make sure you're at the root of whatever project you want. Um, the code what I'll be using for this example will be in the description. If you want to use this, um, if you don't have your own project you want you're trying to deploy, uh, this will be in the description below to use this code if you'd like to. Um, but what we can do here is we can type Heroku login. And it should give this prompt here to press any key to open the browser to log in. So I press any key. It should then open the browser right here. And then we can click log in. I'm already logged in, so it should just automatically log me in. And then we can go ahead and close out this window. Okay, now that we are logged in, we can go ahead and move on to the next step down here. So what we're doing next on these instructions is we're creating a new Git repository. Uh, we're setting the Heroku origin, and then we're adding and committing and pushing all our changes. So if you're unfamiliar, if you're familiar with Git, you should be able to just follow these step by step through here and just, and just do this real quick. If not, I'll go ahead and walk through it in case you're not familiar with Git. Uh, first, what we can do is to create a new Git repository, we can do a Git init. Okay, and now we have that, we can go ahead and do a Git status. And you'll see we have all of our files here, and then right now they're all showing up red. That's because we have not added any files to our project. Uh, what we can do here is do a git add and a period, and that will add everything. If you do a git status, you'll see it now add everything. If there was something here you didn't want to add, what you can do is you can create a dot git ignore. So we're opening up the code, for example, and I were to go to the root of our project, I can go ahead and create a new file, save it as dot git ignore, and we can put anything, any folder here or anything else that we wanted to ignore in our commit, that can all go here. But to keep this as, as basic as possible, I'm not going to go ahead and do that here. So I'm going to delete this. But if you like to do that, that is an option there to make sure you only commit what you want to commit. Uh, but now with all of our files added, we can go ahead and create a git commit. So we do a git commit dash m and then in quotes we'll pass in a message for this commit. Uh, this We'll call this one just first commit. You can call, put anything you want here. And then press enter, and that will create a new commit. We do a git status now. There we go. 
you'll see that there's no red file showing up and that there's nothing to commit and our working tree is clean. So we now have all of our files in that commit. Okay, and now that we have all of our files committed, we can go ahead and push this to Heroku master, the master branch on Heroku. But we can't do that yet because we've not told our Git repository where that's at, which is where this line right here comes into play. So we can go ahead and copy this line, Git Heroku Git remote dash A, and then the name of our app. We go ahead and just copy that. Come back here, do a control shift V, enter, and then you'll see it now added our the remote Heroku to this repository. Now I can go ahead and do a git push Heroku master. And this will not work, but we'll see what it fails here in a second. So at the bottom here, you'll see it's in red saying it failed to push some refs to uh, Heroku. Um, let's see why it failed. So looking at this, it said no default language could be detected for this app. If we look at the Django docs, let's see here if I can find that. Okay, so if you go to devcenter.heroku.com slash article slash deploying Python, you'll see some information on how to set up a Django Py or a Python or Django app uh, with Heroku. And down here you'll see expected files for Python. Heroku automatically identifies your app as a Python app if any of the following files are present in the root directory. Requirements.txt, set up the UI, or a pip file. So we need one of these files in the root of our project, so Heroku knows that this is a Python project. So I'm going to go and create a requirements.txt file uh, for this. So I already have a virtual environment running with all my dependencies installed for this project. Uh, you if you have a Django project, you should have that um, already and so if you already have that what you can do is you can run pip freeze a greater than sign and then requirements txt and what that will do if we look in our project here you'll see now we have this requirements txt file and this has everything installed that we installed in our project so make sure you have that in the root of the file now that error message should go away I come back here and I run git push Roku master again. Oh, I forgot to add that change. So let's do a git status and you'll see we have requirements.txt. We'll do a git add requirements.txt, git commit, dash m added requirements.txt. Okay, now we'll do a git push Roku master again. You'll see now it's installing our different dependencies from that requirements file, and it found the Python version, or it grabbed the uh, default Python version. Okay, and that one deployed just fine. You may be running into an issue where this click static command does not run correctly, and it has some error and errors out right there. If you're getting that, this is how you'll fix that. What you'll do is you'll need to install another package. Uh, in the Django Heroku docs, it gives you this Django Heroku Python package. This t seems to not be maintained anymore, and it doesn't work really anymore. I've ran into a lot of issues trying to get this to work. Uh, if you want to try using this, you can, but a better option will be use a different package called Django-on-Heroku. And right here, this is it on the... Python package website here. Um, you can do pip install Django dash on dash Heroku. So we're going to go ahead and run that to install this package. Up here, control shift V and we'll go ahead and run that. And there we go. So now with that installed, what we can do is we can follow these instructions to use it. And all we need to do is the bottom of our settings at py, we need to see to put this. So we'll copy this, come into our sublime text editor go into the uh, settings.py file, scroll to the bottom, and just paste this right here. And this will set up and handle configuring static files for Heroku for us. Uh, it makes it very easy just to get this thing up and running without having to worry too much about it. So just make sure that's at the bottom if you're getting that error. And then from there, we can go ahead and just do a get status, see what changed. Um, we also, I guess, also want to run before we do anything else, the pip freeze, and then go ahead and put requirements.txt once again, 
and then that should update that file do we get status and now you'll see we have two files changed i'm going to do a git add and a period to add both of those git status and now we have both of these added stage for this commit we can go ahead and do a git commit dash m updated settings and requirements and then with those changes done we can go ahead and run our git push Roku master again okay and with those changes that should hopefully fix if you had a collect static error that should fix that error now if we go back here to the Heroku website and click open app even though it deployed fine down here without any errors we're getting this application error when we actually try to open the app now why is that that is because we need to set up one more thing with Roku to make this work. So what we'll do is we'll open our terminal again. Actually, we'll open up our code here first. And we're going to create a new file in the root of our project. So we'll create a new file. I'm going to save this as capital P O R C file. So proc file with capital P. And we'll need to add one line here. If we go ahead and search, uh, Configure Django for Heroku. You should find this configuring Django as for Heroku uh, documentation here. And you'll see for the for Heroku web applications, they require a proc file. And so that's what we just created. And this file is used to declare applications, processes, types, and entry points. For Django, we need to use Gunicorn, and we need to go ahead and put this line in our proc file. So we'll go ahead and copy this. Come back into this file here and paste this here. Now, honestly, we don't want it to say my project. We want it to be named for our project. So in our case, we have this project called music. So we look inside of our music folder here. We have a WSGI file. So the, our file for this project will be music.wsgi. Now, you probably don't have Gunicorn installed. So what we need to do there is go ahead and install that. And this documentation has a line here of how to install it. So we'll go ahead and just copy this. Come back here and we'll go ahead and just paste that there and install it. I should already have that installed, so it's not going to do anything for me. But if you don't have it installed, you'll need to once again run pip freeze requirements.txt. And then do a git status. And uh, you will probably see your requirements file there as well as your proc file go ahead and add both of those so we'll do a git add period git commit dash in updated proc file and maybe requirements if you update that as well and then we do a git status looks like everything's good git push heroku master okay and it might take a few minutes but it should finish and you should see proc file declares types web with that new type added now if we come back to our application here and we try opening that up again you see it does now run and open our application but we're getting these these uh django errors now now this is kind of a weird looking error you can see the catalog artists not exist uh, it gives us programming error uh, this is a sql this is looking like a sql error and the reason for that is because we've not set our database up yet and so to do that we can run a few commands in heroku now as long as you had your migrations file added so we go into catalog we have our uh right here our migrations so all of these were added with your git commit and push to heroku master you should be able to run this command to fix this problem so normally in Django, we, we type Python 3, manage.py, migrate to migrate our changes to our database. Um, we're going to do the same thing here. What we're going to type in here is Heroku run Python manage.py migrate. And you should see all of our migrations now running and migrating to the database. If we come back here to our project and refresh the page, now we're, we fixed that error. Now we're getting a does not exist error. Our smashing query does not exist. That's because in our project, we're looking for the first artist by using a dot git. And our database now is set up correctly with the correct tables, but it's empty. So there's nothing there right now. 
So let's go and just create something so we have something there so we can uh, just get, fix this error. But how are we going to add something to our database? Um, we could go to our admin panel, slash admin, uh, just like we would normally and log in here. But now our logins are gone because this is a new database. So we can run another command. Instead of Heroku run python manage.py migrate, we can run Heroku run uh, python manage.py create super user. So we can run any Django command this way. Create super user. And this command will allow us to create a user to log into our admin panel with. So I'll go and create an admin user. We'll give it a password. There we go. Once it's created, now that it's finished, we should be able to come here, refresh the page. Now we should be able to log in. There we go. So now if I go into artists, we see it's empty here. Let's go and create a new artist and we'll just do test artist, test artist at example.com test. Um, that should be fine. We'll save that. Okay. Now let's come back here, open up our app again, and there we go. So now our app is loading and our application is working fine. We should be able to go to any of our, our routes now. So we go to slash artists, and it lists out all of our artists. Right now all we have is one, but our application should be working now. Um, if you ran into some other issues there that I didn't go over, uh, what you can do is you can go into Heroku, go into the activity, You can see all of your, your builds here, see if it failed, see if it didn't fail. Um, you click build log, and that will show you any, any errors right here. So in this case, nothing fails, so there's no errors, but if there were errors, it can give you kind of what went wrong here. You can kind of figure out from there uh, kind of what the issue is. Um, but using that package, Django on Heroku should help configure things automatically for you, make it much easier. So if you install that, that should fix most of your problems probably. Um, but that's really it for a really basic app. Just to double check, we can make sure everything's working. So we can go to artist slash create and make sure this form still works. I'll do test artist two, test artist two at example.com, test artist two. And we'll go ahead and choose a profile picture. I'll just pick an old thumbnail and we'll hit submit. Okay. And now we'll go back to our admin panel. Click on artist, click on artist object two. And you'll see here all of our data is saved and it did correctly save our profile picture. So we can correctly save all of our data, including any static files. So everything should be working now. And that's all it really takes to get a really basic project up on Heroku. It's pretty easy to do. Um, if you want to go further and make this, uh, you know, more ready for production, there's different things you can add here. Um, you know, we can add different things as environment variables here. We have one set automatically, which is our database URL. Uh, but you can go through here at SSL certificates, domains. I'm not going to go through on this video. This video is just about getting a really basic test project up and live, uh, which we did do here. So hopefully that helped you if you were struggling getting a project on Heroku, um, but that's really it. If you'd like to see this taken a step further and get it set up to be ready for a production quality application, let me know. I can make another video, but hopefully this will help get you started and get your project up on Heroku. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.